Thank you for joining us on this Wednesday afternoon. I'm Journey Taylor. Here are your top stories we're following for you now at noon. Coming up, horrific new details are emerging on Hamas's attacks on Israeli civilians. Hundreds of thousands of Palestinians fleeing their homes as fighting continues. Plus, the House is still without a speaker. A closer look as House Republicans now must vote on their choice for a replacement. And dealing with a cancer diagnosis at an early age. In six minutes, the trend doctors are seeing and how you can lower your risk. But first, meteorologist Tom Brennan joins us. Tom, it's a little gloomy out there with all those clouds. Are we expecting any rain soon? Well, I wish we had some rain, Journey. It'd be nice to get some rain. It's been awfully dry, but the clouds were expected, and they're going to be with us for a couple of more hours. They'll break up and move to the east, allowing us to warm back into the 80s. Uh, this is part of a bigger system over the Gulf of Mexico that is spreading rainfall close to Arkansas. In fact, I think we've got a few sprinkles falling in extreme southeast Arkansas. Ashley and Chico counties, uh, a little bit there, the northern fringe of the precipitation shield over Union County, Columbia. Lafayette counties might be picking up a few raindrops, but for the rest of us, it's just simply too dry. As we work through your afternoon, I think temperatures have a good chance of rebounding once the sun comes out here. A little rock in the metro area. We'll see that number go back up close to about 84 today with the wind out of the south southeast at around six miles per hour. Again, we're going to carry the above average temperatures through Friday and then a, a big cold front will move through just in time for the weekend. It does not look like we're going to get a lot of rain out of that system. I'll have details on that. Uh, frontal boundary in just a few minutes. Back to you. All right, Tom, thank you. Arkansas State Police continues its investigation today into a woman's death during a DWI accident in Conway. It happened this past Sunday on Highway 46. According to reports, witnesses say Christopher Swilly was driving, quote, recklessly and erratically near Hogan Lane when he hit one vehicle, lost control, then entered westbound traffic and hit another car. During this, Aretha Swilly was killed. There were no other major injuries, and Christopher Swilly was charged with DWI and secondary battery. More than 1,000 people on each side have been killed as a result of Hamas's surprise attack on Israel on Saturday. Now, more details are coming into clearer focus. A warning to viewers, though, some of these images in this report are graphic. Bradley Blackburn has the latest from the United Nations. New horrors are emerging from the communities where Hamas went on a bloody killing spree. After finally wresting back control of Kfar Aza Kibbutz, a small farming community, Israeli security forces say terrorists took brutality to a new level, decapitating children, including babies. You see the babies, the mother, the fathers in their bedrooms, in their protection rooms, and how the terrorists kill them, it's not a war, it's not a battlefield. It's a massacre. Karen Flash, who survived the kibbutz attack along with her husband and baby, says she is numb. There's no going back from this. In Gaza Wednesday, Israel's unrelenting airstrikes on suspected Hamas targets continued, demolishing entire neighborhoods. Israel has cut off the entry of food, water, fuel and medicine into the territory, making the situation dire for the more than two million Palestinians who live there. The U.N. says more than a quarter million people in Gaza have fled their homes, and it expects that number to climb as fighting continues. Israel has mobilized hundreds of thousands of military reservists, making it appear increasingly likely that it will launch a ground invasion. Israel is also sending tanks to its border with Lebanon. We stand with Israel. On Tuesday, President Biden pledged support for Israel. The first U.S. shipment of weapons has already arrived, and defense officials say a small group of U.S. special forces is on the ground to help with planning and intelligence. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. And the United States says 14 Americans are among the dead and at least 20 are also missing, although it's unclear how many are among the more than 100 people who have been abducted. Well, the death toll continues to rise in Israel. Now more details are continuing to unfold about Hamas's attack on a small village near Gaza's border. In the small farming community of Kafar Zai Kibbutz, Israeli security forces discovered the aftermath of a massacre. Residents were murdered wherever the gunmen found them. The question now is how Israel will respond as deadly airstrikes continue on the Gaza Strip. It was an absolute war zone. It was an absolute war zone. And the Cars the flipped over, completely wrecked. And we were sitting there, both of us, with our little innocent baby who was sleeping at the time. We were basically barricaded in 
for 21 hours until the army rescued us. Now, many are struggling to find safety as Israeli strikes demolish neighborhoods and a power blackout is expected when fuel runs out. X, the platform formerly known as Twitter, says it is removing accounts affiliated with the Palestinian terror group Hamas. Critics have slammed the social media company for not doing enough to combat misinformation about the conflict in Israel. One research group says it found a network of 67 accounts conducting a false information campaign about the conflict. X says it is also monitoring its platform for anti-Semitic speech. Well, House Republicans are expected to vote today on their choice to be the next Speaker of the House. GOP leader Steve Scalise and Jim Jordan are both running to replace Kevin McCarthy, who was removed last week. McCarthy took himself out of the contention for returning to the role. The leadership vacuum in the House has essentially stalled Congress, leaving it unable to conduct business. New York Congressman George Santos was hit with new criminal charges. Santos has admitted to lying about his background during his campaign before. Now he's accused of charges, including conspiracy, aggravated identity theft and credit card fraud. Prosecutors say Santos stole the identities of campaign donors and used their credit cards for more than $40,000 in unauthorized charges. Santos denied the charges and said he will fight the indictments, quote, until the bitter end. In recognition of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and Arkansan is sharing her battle after being diagnosed at just 36 years old. She's part of the growing number of people under 50 getting diagnosed with cancer. Sarah Hobakowitz spoke with her and a doctor for a closer look at the scary statistic. A new study shows worldwide cancer cases for people under age 50 are up about 80%. And right now, the director of the Cancer Institute at UAMS says while that statistic is serious, it needs more context. He says a big part of it is technology advances that help detect cancer earlier. But in order to detect it, people need to know the risks and what to look for. I was 36 years old. It was uh, my birthday, actually. In a self exam, Kelly Pittman noticed a lump years younger than the recommended breast cancer screening age. A few appointments later, she got a diagnosis. I had two tumors. It was stage three and thinking, oh my gosh, I have two little kids to raise. Thankfully, I had uh, just a army of medical physicians and nurses. Dr. Michael Burr directs the Cancer Institute at UAMS, seeing a trend of younger people getting diagnosed. So we're pushing those screening tests earlier and earlier. So if you find a cancer, it's going to be at an earlier age. When you diagnose a lot of these cancers early onset, they're usually also early stage curable. Dr. Burr says some of the biggest factors are poor diet, alcohol and tobacco use, inactivity and obesity. It means get the young man, young woman, when they're in middle school and somehow they're already vaping or maybe they're already into cigarettes, that's where the intervention has to happen. And while sometimes genetics and environment can be factors, more studies are still being done. Right now, UAMS is working to teach more people across the state about their cancer risks. What's happening to the patient in Helena or Jonesboro or El Dorado? That's cancer education. We need to get the message out. But because she got screened, Kelly is now in remission. I advocate for young people to, to just know their bodies themselves. Encouraging others to get checked out as early as they can. Early detection really saves lives, so that's my biggest push. Dr. Burr says genetic testing has also advanced in recent years. So if it's been a while since you've gotten tested, there are more factors doctors can look at now than you may have when you first got tested. Well, UMS has its mobile mammogram van or memovan out around the state for screenings. Next month, they're hosting a day of lung screenings as well, and they say most insurances will cover these screenings. Now, CARTA is also making breast cancer screenings more accessible with its mammograms and muffins event. Each week from Monday through Saturday, they're offering screenings at a different CARTA cancer center. This week it's in North Little Rock and next week it will be moved to Little Rock and then finally Pine Bluff. It's from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays and 8 to noon on Saturdays. Now you can always pre-register and find more details online at the CARTA website. 
Well, the new RSV shot is creating confusion for parents. After the break, we'll break down the details on who's eligible and how to get it. And Amazon continues to grow. Still ahead, how the company is partnering with trade schools to help keep their fleets moving. Tom? Well, turning outside, overcast skies. We're looking east northeast. The clouds are a little thicker, but to the west, they're beginning to break up. And when those clouds break up this afternoon, temperatures should climb back into the lower 80s. We're taking a look ahead. Going to time out that next cold front after this.